That's report number three. Amen. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, first up, hear me okay? I can, yeah. Yeah, first up, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, Councillor Morantz um, for his upcoming motion um, on the transit security. There are, you know, the, um, can I speak on that right now? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah the, the fact that, uh, you know, um, the councillor wants a comprehensive uh, report on, on the, uh, the current practices uh, for security, I think it's, it's a great first step, absolutely. My problem with it, though, unfortunately, is, is the, the time that it's supposed to take. I've been told it's up to 90 days for that report to take place, and um, that to me is, is uh, it's unacceptable. And I think that a lot of it, a lot of the issues, we could probably, you know, do a one-pager in probably an afternoon or a couple of days, you know, uh, for, for some of the, the biggest issues that uh, my members uh, face. Uh, the, you know the bus operators on a daily basis um, a couple of issues that I wanted to speak about is um, uh, you know assaults I mean a lot of focus has been put on this latest assault which obviously is very serious I mean uh, someone lost their life but assaults have been ongoing they're they're almost a daily occurrence and uh, whether they're uh, a physical assault or a, a verbal assault uh, there's a lot of issues uh, that our members face and a lot of um, psychological trauma and uh, which is ongoing and I mean there's ways of addressing it uh, because security is one thing uh, to um, you know to to protect our members in conflict but first of all we have to try to reduce conflict and and conflict starts because of unclear policy and there's lots of those in in the transit system um, a lack of public knowledge and, and education as far as transit policy again and um, uh, rider etiquette um, something as simple as here's one one example our rear doors we have five or six different um, mechanisms for operating the rear door on a bus for opening the rear door there's not a day that I ride the bus when there isn't um, someone shouting at the driver, open the door, uh, because they don't know how to operate the door. They need to be educated on that. And um, numerous policies uh, that, again, the, the public is unaware of our policies. It starts as a simple conflict, a simple uh, verbal dispute, which can quickly escalate into a, a physical altercation. And, and this is something that they're faced daily. Um, so again, I mean, there's a lot of focus, I, I'll say again, on, on this latest issue, but it's, it's ongoing. Um, transit has the most employees off on long-term disability than any other department within the city. A lot of those are psychosocial issues because of ongoing um, psychological uh, trauma uh, due to um, uh, constant confrontation, uh, verbal, um, um, you know, threats, um, being bullied. It's, 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 it's a daily occurrence. The other issue we need to talk about is, is scheduling. Um, a lot of the schedules are, they're, they're too unpredictable. I mean, there, there is too many variables out there. In the wintertime, there's weather. Summertime, there's construction. And when the bus is late, I mean, yeah, they say, you know, call 311 and complain, but 90% of the people take it out on the driver. And, and again, uh, it starts out as, as a, a simple conflict, you know, a verbal conflict, and again, can quickly escalate. Uh, to a to a shouting match and then uh, into a, a, a physical altercation so there's things that need to be done I mean that's a I mean that's a big undertaking uh, scheduling there's no doubt about it uh, one thing that uh, you know ATU is doing uh, that's being proactive in that area along with our citizens for transit coalition is uh, we're looking at uh, not looking we, we've already booked 
a uh, planner, Jared Walker, to, uh, to come to uh, Winnipeg to put on a, uh, a workshop and do a presentation to, uh, to the mayor and to the council, which will be, I say will be coming up May 11th and 12th. Uh, that's a big part of, of again, uh, avoiding conflict is more predictable scheduling, um, better um, transfer points, which again uh, keeps our our riders happy, and uh, there's less opportunity for altercation again with our <coughs> bus operators. The other big part of this is training uh, for bus operators. Right now, they get um, a half day uh, conflict uh, training, or a, a, I think it's called TRAPS, Transit Assault uh, Prevention Strategies, um, which involves some um, some means of um, self-defense, but also how to try to uh, reduce conflict and de-escalate situations. Now, I mean, that is, in my opinion, um, that is not enough. That's nowhere near enough for, for training to, uh, to de-escalate uh, situations that occur on a daily basis on our buses, especially when, you, when it involves people who may be suffering from mental health issues or uh, substance abuse issues, which again is a, is a daily occurrence on our buses. And uh, without the tools to, uh, to deal with those issues, our members are often involved in, in conflict again, which, which escalates into physical altercations. Now, um, there are ways of addressing that, and um, you know, through training, proper training. I know that uh, back, um, it was last year uh, during the um, ceremony for uh, the day of mourning. I remember Mayor Bowman and um, also uh, CEO Doug McNeil uh, said that uh, the city of Winnipeg is committed to making uh, the city of Winnipeg a leader in psychological health and safety training and I, I think that we need to really work at that. We need to provide that training to, uh, to transit supervisors as well as the employees to help them deal with issues, um, to help to de-escalate situations, especially like I say with all the ongoing conflict involving uh, individuals who, who suffer from um, mental health issues and again I'll say uh, substance abuse issues. Um, there's a, there's a couple of other areas that, uh, that I think that we can look at for some immediate improvement. Um, I know that, uh, again, uh, uh, Councillor Morantz's um, um, motion to get that, that report is, is a, again, I'll say a, a first step and, and you know, it's a, a comprehensive view that, that is probably needed. But again, I'm going to say that we can look at um, a number of improvements that we could do immediately, and uh, we don't have to break the bank doing it. It's uh, it's more of a common sense approach, um, a matter of uh, some redeploying some uh, folks, perhaps. But um, I think that the training aspect and uh, um, some of the policy. Um, gray areas need to be addressed and they, they need to be addressed immediately and I think that it's quite possible to get going on those uh, well within uh, a month's time. Uh, one of the other things that has uh, is, is been brought to my attention too is uh, there's a number of counselors that have reached out to me, contacted me that uh, you know they, they understand the seriousness of this issue and would want to be part of it, part of a solution too. So perhaps uh, there, there needs to be uh, more involvement into this issue and uh, more of a, uh, a uh, brainstorming or um, Towards resolution, or, or their, you know, or, or look at a, a a better venue to try to address these issues and address them in a timely manner. Any questions? 
our clarity on any of the points that I brought forward. No, I, I just want to thank you for coming and um, supporting the concept of the report and also sharing your your very, um, very, very legitimate uh, concerns. I have to say that um, I know you and I have had some great discussions and meetings yes. around this and um, um, it, it just, my, my eyes have certainly been open to to the um, stress of, of, of being a transit driver and no one should fear for their personal safety or their life when they go to work as a transit operator. And I, I can only imagine what, um, what the staff of Winnipeg Transit are, are going through right now. I try and put myself in the seat of um, there's an element of risk. And um, I think um, our job as counselors is as counselors is to take this matter very seriously and I think it's very clear that we are and uh, to try and take uh, methodical steps with the goal of, of reducing the risk of any anything like this happening in the future um, and all the points you've raised are, are the reasons I want the report right like I, I want to be able to read exactly you know what what the training is all about what they currently do so once once I have that you know we can have a full discussion about it with with all of council to um, and the public the report will be open to the public people can read the report it'll be online it'll be on Demas so it'll be made available by me and whoever else wants to be ma make it available and, and we can have like a, a, a full a full discussion about all of these all these points um, I'm looking forward to Mr. Walker coming to town. Uh, he is uh, certainly very well respected in the area of, of uh, transit, and um, be, be interesting to hear what his ideas are. And he'll have, I think, a pretty broad knowledge of inter interjurisdictional practices around safety. Which yeah. is one of the questions, you know, I, I'd be interested in asking him. Uh, public education, uh, for sure. I, I think I had mentioned to you. I think it would be a good idea, for example, with the. Um, <coughs> You know the um, the sound systems on buses to make better use of those. I, I know when I've traveled to other cities, there's all kinds of messaging that you can use with the sound systems on bus to inform passengers of different uh, different issues. And um, um, so, you know, there's a lot of really good ideas I think that can come out of what is a horribly tragic uh, situation. So, I I. I Beyond reaching across the table and giving you a big hug, this is my version of it. Thank you for thank well, you for being here, and uh, you know we're we're certainly with you. We, we have different we have some differences of opinion on the best approach, but I, I think that we are going in 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 the right direction, and and I, I, I do hope that we can uh, come up with with real solutions. So yeah, no. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, the hug would be great. I'm I'm sure, but uh, I mean, yeah. The report, the, the direction, the discussion we've had has been great. I mean, uh, my only issue, again, I'm going to say it, is the time. The timeline is just, uh, there's the, again, I'll say there's things we can do immediately. Um, uh, this weekend, this past weekend, we had uh, two more threats. Uh, another operator was threatened to be stabbed. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's ongoing. Like, I mean, it's, it's to the point where we don't want this to happen again. So we need to be as proactive as possible. And, um, you know, there's a logical approach, uh, but there's also things that I think that we can do uh, immediately to, to uh, provide just that extra sense of security to our members in, in you know, an immediate uh, response to the situation. And, uh, and, and there's also some things that I think we can do responsibly too within a shorter timeline. So I'll... I'll um, and so with that, um, the public service will be up here when we get to the report. Sure. And I will be asking them about that. Um, Councillor Sherman. Mm -hmm. Mr. Callahan, uh, thank you for coming today. Appreciate the discussions uh, you and I have had over the last week or so. Yep. It's really, really sad that the incident that occurred has brought us to reviewing transit safety management today. It, we can't be complacent, and I think this is something that we need to be reviewing ongoing. Uh, I do appreciate the work of the chair, um, having drafted this motion in advance of today's meeting. 
Mr. Callahan, you mentioned reducing conflict is critical. It's important. That's exactly the spirit of um, the motion here. The safety of transit customers, drivers, and staff is of paramount importance to the City of Winnipeg. And I think all councillors I know in my discussions are very uh, much want to be involved in the conversation. I think they will be mm -hmm. once we get this, um, this uh, report that will be coming forward. And perhaps we can talk to the public service. I know it's 90 days you're mentioning. That's too long. Yes. Perhaps if they have it ready earlier, we could bring it forward at that time. Yeah, we'll, we'll be asking on that. I, I think the bottom line is that, uh, as you and I have discussed, I, I think we, we want to collaborate together to try and find the best solutions yes. that we can, and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will also be asking them about, um, uh, to your point, if there's anything more immediate that can be done in the interim. Um, um, I think it's a reasonable, very reasonable question to ask, so we will be asking that when they, when the report comes Just up. Another quick minutes. question. Please, of course, yeah. Mr. Callahan, <clears throat> on the buses, it is, are, is the public aware that we do have cameras on buses? Is there signage? I'm not sure of that. Um, yeah, there's 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 signage there. I mean, there's some ideas that we've had around that too. Some discussion. I mean, um, maybe we need monitors on there, like live monitors, so that uh, people can actually see themselves and know, like like department stores have. You see, you know, the cameras, and they also have a monitor, so you see yourself. I mean, maybe that's part of what needs to happen. But there is signage, so the public is aware yeah, they're yeah. being videotaped. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure, please. Um, thank you, uh, John, for your uh, presentation. Um, you didn't mention your presentation, but you have in the past uh, talked about the issue of fair collection and the responsibility of fair collection yes. being perhaps with the driver, or perhaps not. You talked about the need for more clarity around city policies. Yes. Um, and I, um, I wonder if you'd comment on that. I, I know that when I was 19 years old, which wasn't that long ago, I guess, but. Um, I went, I went to Sweden and uh, their fair collection was responsibility of uh, was responsibility of the rider to have a receipt that they had paid for their fare and it was known uh, by Swedes that uh, you you really needed to make sure you had that receipt and if you didn't you paid very steep fines and um, you had to deal with the uh, the transit police force out there so I wonder if you know of any um, uh, any jurisdictions where that systems in place. I, I noticed I did a quick Google search. The York Transit Region has uh, security officers that uh, are responsible for, for fair enforcement. So I wonder if that, if, if you think that that should be part of the discussion as well. I, re I realize we're doing a comprehensive mm -hmm. review, but you didn't yeah. mention it specifically in your comments. Yeah. Um, actually, Councilor Morantz and I did have that discussion. <laughs> and um, that is uh, fair disputes. Uh, are responsible for about two-thirds of reported assaults and um, uh, to your point um, yeah that's something that a lot of jurisdictions have in Canada uh, Ottawa is an example uh, you can load um, you know they have a different uh, you know uh, system for purchasing tickets and whatnot but you can load through the front door you can load through the back door depending on what what type of fare you're paying uh, we could essentially do the same thing I mean, we would, uh, we would have to have fare inspectors, but I mean, people could board the bus if you're paying a cash fare. Uh, we could set it up so that the fare box provides a transfer. The transfer is your form of a receipt. And, and anyone else, if you're using a Pago card, uh, you know, there are handheld readers that inspectors could have for checking for an active fare on the Pago cards. Absolutely, I would love to see fare collection taken out of the hands of the operators because there's just there's too many unclear policies again surrounding uh, transit's fare policy, uh, you know, uh, and it's an ongoing issue, and it's an issue um, that you know the driver. It's enough of a job driving the bus, um, providing a, a safe ride, uh, providing the, you know, the customer service as far as direction and whatnot, where, you know, where the, the, the timing point or the transfer points are, those type of things. But fare collection, there's just too many issues surrounding it that um, I, I totally believe that it needs to be taken out of the hands of the operators and we could uh, use fare inspectors like other uh, properties do right across Canada. Could, could you walk us through what an interaction might be uh, with uh, with the driver in the case where uh, a, 
a customer doesn't have the fare or has part fare? Well, or what's um, supposed to happen? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the scenario. I mean, there's there's uh, situations where you might get, um, you know, an adult, uh, 40, 50 year old person trying to use a student's pass. I mean, it, those type of things happen all the time. Uh, so it, you know, he may say the operator may say, "Well, that's that's not the right pass for you." And I mean, it, it could escalate, or it, or they could uh, say, "Okay, well, um, I'll, I'll pay twice the next time," you know, and, and go sit down. Or it could be they don't have enough fare, and uh, I mean, sometimes they'll stand there and they'll they'll do the pocket check, you know, stand there for five minutes checking their pockets and whatnot, and uh, it, you know, it, sometimes the operator will just tell them, "Okay, just." just sit down, pay twice the next time. Um, or there's just individuals that just get on and just don't even look at the fare box, just go and sit down. You know, and those type of things happen. Now it depends on, on the operator, how they, how they um, react to that. Sometimes if you ask, uh, you know, excuse me, are, are you gonna pay a fare? They say, hey, you know, you embarrass me now. You know, and then and then it can quickly uh, result in a, in another conflict, which which again could turn uh, physical. So there's there's just so many scenarios. I mean, uh, expired transfers, and um, there's a lot of operators now um, to avoid that type of conflict that that won't even monitor the fare box. They'll look away. So uh, fare evasion is a big issue in our city, and. Uh, for a system that is very dependent on uh, fare box revenue, um, it's something that that needs to be addressed as well. So right now, um, there's 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 not a whole lot of deterrent uh, to to uh, pay fares. Just one last question, John. Um, uh, you and I worked uh, hard to bring to this council the attention of, well, of transit safety and. Yes. Uh, we were successful in, uh, I guess, convincing council and the police board that uh, police should be riding the buses. And I understand now that we have plain clothes and uniform officers on buses since last year. Yeah. Do you think things have gotten better since uh, since that's uh, been the case? Well, I I mean, definitely this year there was, uh, or in 2016 rather, there was a decrease in um, assaults as compared to 2015. And I do know that we've got. Uh, to our office reports from bus operators, almost three dozen reports um, of plain clothes officer intervention in situations that, that could have easily escalated into, uh, into a, a physical confrontation. So I, I definitely think that it's, there's been an improvement. Um, I know over the summer months from May, uh, May, June, July, and August, in 2015 we had 28 assaults. In 2016 we were only at seven. So it was definitely a, a, a big decrease. Um, overall, um, there was again a, a, a decrease. And not to sound cliche or anything, but one assault is one too many. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, thanks, John. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, John. And, All right. Um, appreciate uh, your comments today. Very All much. Right. Thank you.